Welcome, welcome, welcome everyone to Talent Experience Live, the show that everyone loves that they can't wait to watch every single Thursday at noon Eastern time, where we, of course, cover everything that you need to know in talent acquisition, recruiting, human resources, and of course, talent management. We like to say here, Talent Experience Live is the greatest show on the internet. My colleague and friend Tom Tate, Tom Tate came up with that, and quite frankly, I can't argue with him. It is the greatest show on the internet. So thank you for tuning in. Uh, I am your host, Devin Foster. And Talent Experience Live, of course, is proudly brought to you by the good folks here at Phenom, whose purpose, stop me if you've heard this before, is to help 1 billion people find the right job. I certainly have found the right job through Phenom. I hope thousands of other Others have, but we're not done yet. Everyone who works here at Phenom, who uses Phenom, when they wake up in the morning, their purpose is to help a billion people find the right job. And how do you do that? Well, I thought you'd never ask. Uh, we, of course, do that through our intelligent, intelligent talent experience platform, which helps candidates find the right fit or role faster. Employees evolve into the next level of their current career and beyond. Recruiters achieve some next level productivity. And of course, managers build better teams with data and analytics and of course, automation. Now automation, quite frankly, that can't be done without artificial intelligence. And that is what power powers <laughs> Phenom's intelligent talent experience. It's with super slick AI that is done on the back end, so you never feel it. If you are interested in learning more or checking out some of our previous blog episodes from the Talent Experience Live show. You can always find them at phenom.com. Uh, we have some new news coming up in the coming weeks, uh, some events coming up in the new week. So you definitely want to head over there, check it out, check out our blogs, and read everything that you want to know about talent acquisition, human resources, recruiting, and talent management, and so much more, I promise you. Today's episode of Talent Experience Live is, of course, recapping what we covered last month, which was all around recruitment marketing. Uh, we had a number of great episodes with industry leaders, as well as folks who are recruitment marketing every single day. It was It is within their job title. So we are going to have a great conversation with Carrie Monaco around these previous episodes and also how you can apply some of these tips and tricks, even if you're not using Phenom to your current talent acquisition or recruitment marketing strategy. With that being said, uh, there's a couple of things that I want to go over before we dive into that episode. Number one is starting next week, our next season, if you will, of Talent Experience Live, we'll dive into talent management. We are talking everything around the talent marketplace, how to help your employees evolve to that next role and beyond. I'll be joined uh, by or with Tom Tate. We're going to dive into those. We're going to have special guests, some Phenom customers, some folks who are just killing it when it comes to employee experience and talent marketplace and everything in between. Uh, so if that's a struggle for your organization, which if you turn on the news, it's a struggle for a lot of organizations right now. You definitely want to check that out. If you can't watch the episode live every Thursday at noon Eastern time, you can always watch the replay on YouTube. We do the blog on phenom.com. Definitely check that out. But we did put a nice little teaser together for you just to get you excited. October's coming to an end. The leaves are beginning to change, and we're about to talk employee experience and talent management. So here is our little promo. What are we doing to develop them, to retain them? Engagement's higher, your retention is higher. Know where to can take her. Our internals are getting the great same experience. A place that we could tap into our internal people and leverage their strengths. Some very special guests coming up, so you won't want to miss that. Video gets me excited every single time I see it. The only bad part is the Yankee hat that is sitting on my desk next to me. Let's not talk about baseball. Uh, baseball is done for me. I know everyone in Philadelphia is super excited. And lots of people are super excited about a lot of things coming up this weekend. It's Halloween. People are getting ready to trick or treat. They're putting on costumes. So our icebreaker as tradition around these parts that we do every single episode, I want to hear from you in the audience. What are you dressing up as for Halloween? Or what are some costumes that you're like, wow, that is clever. Uh, I can't wait to 
you know, do that next year or dress up a child like that next year. Uh, cause it's, it's, it's a fun time of year, right? You get to act a little bit out of the ordinary. And I was stumbling through some costume ideas and I actually came across this one, which is the scariest costume that I have seen. I, I believe we have a graphic. Could we, we flash that up on the screen. There it is. Yes, it's a recruiter without artificial intelligence. Stressed beyond belief. That is the scariest costume that I have seen. Uh, I'm certainly not going to be purchasing it because it seems like a nightmare to me. Uh, but I know lots of people are dealing with that nightmare on a regular basis, to which I will say, head on over to phenom.com to learn how super slick artificial intelligence can power an intelligent talent experience platform. Hopefully, help you fill roles and evolve beyond and help managers out and everyone in between as well as recruiters. But enough about employee experience, enough about Halloween. Let me know what you are dressing up as this year or in years past. Uh, let's dive a little bit more into today's topic. Um, uh, as I mentioned, over the month of September, we dove deep into the world of recruitment marketing uh, with some of the best businesses and who is doing things really well. Uh, but let's be honest, a lot of organizations aren't doing things well. And when it comes to recruitment marketing, uh, you can't really just copy and paste, right? You have to really massage what works for your organization. But we had some great guests come on and talk about what are tips and tricks, how to leverage video, how to use talent communities and everything in between for your recruitment marketing strategy. I see Angelica chimes in. Uh, she is going to be a car dealer air dancer. I believe that's one of these things that goes around like that, which is hilarious within itself. Sometimes I feel like that when I have too much on my plate, I need a little bit of automation to help me get through the day. Angelica, next week, send some pictures, drop them in. We also just created a registration page for Talent Experience Live on our website. Um, so if you are going to miss any future episodes or want to get a perhaps a recording of previous episodes, you can always register there. It is under our community tab on phenom.com where you can learn about more recruitment marketing strategies. Anyway, enough of the chitter chatter and everything about Halloween and baseball and anything in between. Let's dive into today's episode with Carrie Monaco, product marketing manager here at Phenom to talk all around recruitment marketing. Carrie, how Hi. are you? Hi, how are you? I'm good. Welcome to the show. You excited? I am. You are? <laughs> how, I am how are you very doing today? excited. I don't know. <laughs> it's it's actually like... finally it's finally dry in New York. It's been I'm from New York. If anyone's out there, say hello. Um yeah, I'll be there. But it has we been raining. Lunch. Oh, maybe we can. Um it's been raining for the past few days. So yeah. So you're you're drying out. That it's is drying good. out. I see a, a couple more comments have come in. I see Tom says that he is allergic to unintelligent chat bots. Uh he always breaks out into hives around them. Tom, I'm sorry. Uh, luckily, if you visit a Phenom career site, you won't run into one of those unintelligent uh, career site chat bots. Uh, but potentially, if you are doing some weekend shopping over the holiday weekend, you may find a couple when your tracking items don't match up or anything like that. So best of luck and you know, keep, keep that Benadryl on deck. Carrie, it is a pleasure to have you on the program. Do you have any fun plans for the weekend? Oh, definitely. Uh, we're going to go up north, apple picking and pumpkin picking combination. Um, yeah, it sounds go. like a lot of fun, but I'm not too sure because I got two little ones. So we'll see how much that fun is going to be. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Well, I fun or not, you will have the memories and they will last forever. Um, so that's always, you can always look back on it and laugh, right? That's, that's, that's what happens. Um, but that's awesome. I hope you, I hope you have a great time. I hope it all goes well. Uh, Carrie, obviously we have had uh, a plethora of guests on over the past few weeks. And what we're going to do today is we're going to dive into some of the clips, some of the things that they shared, um, and we're going to dissect them. We're going to add our expertise uh, to what they may have said, expound on it a little bit more, and hopefully give the good folks watching, uh, you know, some tips and tricks to, to go home and add to their recruitment strategy as soon as today. Uh, so without any further hesitation, we are going to start with our first clip, which is from Jordan Shelton of cave, uh, who talked a lot about social media and how to be genuine, uh, within your social media approach. That's, I mean, that's 2012 recruitment. 
marketing tactics. Like we have nap rooms, so you never have to leave. You can work here for 17 hours a day and never see your kids. You're gonna love it. Like those days are done. We're we've gone through the pandemic. People are like, we're valuing different parts of work. That stuff is cool, but I care more about what's the pay. Is there health care? Who are the people I'm working with? Am I working on meaningful work? Right. I don't know about you, but I've been in a million offices with ping pong tables and, and there's nobody playing. So I, I think we care at a deeper level about the work we're doing and the people we're impacting and ultimately the people we're working with as well. We, we do have another clip that we're going to air um, of Jordan uh, a little bit later in the program. But uh, he, what he was talking about there was the recruitment market strategy of showcasing your your company highlight reel, right? I, I shared the story on that episode. If you want to catch the full episode, it's on YouTube and on LinkedIn. Uh, you can always find it there. Just search Phenom. Um, but I shared the story of working at a company, an organization where I did sales. And they had a pool table. And it was one of their big selling points. It was as I was a 22 year old who just graduated college. I was like, this is odd. There's an Xbox, there's a pool table, but I'll tell you what, Carrie, as soon as we didn't meet our goals, uh, the controllers to the Xbox magically disappeared as did the pool cues and the pool balls. The fun and games were no longer there because we weren't hitting our metrics rather than companies sharing those highlight reels of you know, things that, that may not be true. Uh, what do you think companies can do to, to showcase their employer brand that isn't ping pong tables or pool tables? What, you don't like ping pong tables? And, and pool I, tables? Love, I love no? ping pong. I mean, <laughs> I love it. Um, well, there's so many ways companies can easily do this today. I mean, especially with technology like Phenom, they could update their website with engaging content that, in, that educates talent about the company's core values, its culture, the work environment. Um, you can send out targeted recruitment campaigns that are personalized to different pools of candidates. Um, you can create spotlight videos talking about why employees join the company, um, how it ties to the culture, and really get their personal connection there. No, I, I think that that makes total sense. We've seen a shift right over this past year um, where candidates, they're savvy, right? Everyone yeah. does their research. That's why Big organizations like Yelp and Glassdoor exist. I cut you off. What did, did you want to I, add? I was just agreeing with you. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay. All right. I'm sorry. No, you're fine. You're fine. Um, but I, we've seen this shift where companies or excuse me, candidates also care about where a company stands socially, right? Yeah. What, there's a lot of chaos going on in the world and they want to make sure that their overall ideas and ideologies line up with the organization that they're working for. So I, I think that is a, another way to showcase that culture that you talked about, right? To bring in yeah. that right company fit because you don't want to have organizations that um, their employees don't align with the purpose like they do here at Phenom, right? Our purpose is to help a billion people find the right job. Uh, in our next clip from Jordan. Uh, he talks about a must have that every organization must leverage. Uh, if you're not, you're not keeping up with the Joneses when it comes to recruitment marketing. So let's air that clip. Video, video, video showing a potential candidate can learn so much more about a company when you're able to show video of what's the day in the life. Is it testimonials from past people uh, or current staff? When you can lean into that and give more information to potential candidates, you are showing more, you're being more authentic. It's not a overproduced pre-made graphic that's just the you know, company highlight reel. You're able to give a little bit more of that behind the scenes. That to me is what's really gonna ring through and what's gonna differentiate you. Now I say it's position specific because if I'm recruiting in-house counsel, does, the, does that attorney want to hear from the IT team and vice versa, right? So I wanna make sure that I'm also showing the right part of the business and showing you know, the people that you would be working with and here's the team and here's what they sit or if you're remote, you know, here's how you connect, whatever that may be. So I think really leaning into um, you know, position or department specifics and then taking video and, and running with it. Carrie, I don't know if you caught that. Um, 
Jordan might have been a little more subtle than I liked, but he he's pretty excited about video, right? Oh, I think Overall, he, wait, it's video. I thought there was something else. No, <laughs> but, but he should have mentioned it one more time. I I loved it. I I loved that presentation of it because it is it's important. But he's so don't right. Have it. He exactly exactly. And when we think of recruitment marketing, oftentimes we think of email campaigns, right? Text message campaigns, mm -hmm. things like this. But my question for you is: We just mentioned that candidates are savvy, right? They're going to do their research. Do you think that this video content should be housed on other either social media or websites where, where video is, is king like YouTube and, and TikTok? should, oh. should companies begin to add them there? Absolutely. I think that's a, that's a great point. Um, they should be added everywhere. Uh, people watch more videos than they do listen or read any, any other type of material. Uh, videos are a great way to show off your brand, uh, especially if the candidates want to be talked to that through that channel. Um, you know, they may start their journey off at YouTube. They not they may not start their journey off at, on your career site. And if you're if you have a great you know selection of videos, you should place it on all social media channels: Twitter, TikTok, YouTube anywhere you can, because you don't know where that candidate's going to be. So you want to be where they are. Um, no, that, that, that makes sense. I mean, we have to, well, in our, in our next clip, I, I talk with Amit, we, we have to meet candidates where they are and they're on social media. And we've seen a bit of an evolution over the past few years where career sites are now adding the ability to upload their resume or background through a LinkedIn profile or sign in through Facebook. Yeah. If you're offering those options natively on your site, it would make sense to host them everywhere else. And and you talked about people watching more video than than listening or or reading job posts. Like it's a great way to get your information out there. Even podcasts, podcasts are huge. Everyone and their cousin has a podcast podcast right now. Um, but people are also they're simulcasting it, right? They're putting it on YouTube. They're putting those clips onto other aspects, and that's you know, consumer branding. But when we think about recruiting and recruitment marketing, oftentimes it is so synonymous with what people are selling. You're selling a job recruiters at the end of the day, right? You are yeah. pitching your company to a candidate. And we know Candidate, this because yeah, the labor market are customers. is customers. Candidates yes. are really customers. Yes. That's the key. 100%. That's, that's really going to drive the best outcome for your videos. If you look at it from that perspective. Mm -hmm. I mean, I when picture this, it is Thursday afternoon, um, and you need to hop on to Amazon to buy a must-have in your house. What's the first thing you're going to do? You're going to look at the reviews. Those oh, same yes. strategies are being applied to organizations. Absolutely. Before candidates apply, they're going to look to see a day in the life. They're going to look to see what your reviews are. And I'm going to let you in on a secret. Uh, a lot of companies don't put their reviews on their career site. Uh, they put them they're on glass door, right? And yep. that's a candidate leaving your experience to then do more research. So you have to have it everywhere at, at this point. Um, Amit is our next guest that we are going to showcase the clip. Uh, I had the pleasure of chatting with him at HR Tech. Um, so it was live from the, the conference floor. Um, and this clip proves it, right? It, it is loud. Uh, Mike's cut out every here and there. Um, but I had a great conversation. If you weren't able to catch this episode, definitely check it out on YouTube. And with that being said, let's air the clip of myself and Ahmed out at HR Tech. We're, we're prepping for the next evolution of it, right? So oh yeah, and it's about time, man, right? Like I see, I see billboards on roads and I'm like, what, really? Like that is such like general marketing. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. People are still spending a lot of money on billboards on roads. The billboards on roads scares me a little bit because you shouldn't be texting and driving, right? What are you, you're pulling out your phone and taking a picture Scanning. of the follow-up? But I, I think there's something towards just creating a presence, right? And when we, we talk about social media and things like that, you can't, I mean, you can apply through Facebook, but you can't necessarily apply on your Instagram, on your TikTok, or anything like that. It was it was an awesome conversation out there with with Amit, and he mentioned there how billboards is is old school. I make the joke of it's it's not safe to text and drive. Carrie, I went on a run this morning through Philadelphia. I almost got hit by two cars. People are blowing through stop signs. We need less billboards and people on their phones if that's what they're doing. Um, but I he 
we talk a little bit there about social media. So I want to ask you the, the question today. It is July or excuse July. It July. is October 6th. <laughs> I wish it was still July. Me it too. is October 6th, 2022. Is it safe to say that social media is a must have for all talent acquisition teams now? I mean, do we really have to say it? Absolutely. Absolutely. Leveraging social media for recruiting is a great way to convey your company culture, make connections with active and passive candidates. So you kind of get like the best of both worlds. Yeah. No, I, I, I agree. And I, I think back to other positions that I had where I may not have been the happiest in my role. And what do we all do to try and escape reality when we're unhappy with we pull out our phone we hop on instagram we hop on twitter we see what else is going on in the world candidates are doing that at their current jobs right they're hopping on they're looking to be entertained it doesn't mean that they're going to apply from that particular job posting but if a video you produce of a day in the life catches their attention it, it garners a little bit of interest um why not take advantage it's free it is free to create an account. I know yeah. that because there are a thousand burner accounts out on Twitter right now, right? There are meme accounts, which we don't even know who's behind them. Create that account. If you show up into somebody's timeline because the algorithm was in your favor that day, it can't hurt, right? Um, and I think that's that's the way that we have I to think, look at yeah, it. We, but, we, I think you need to be everywhere today. You can't you mm -hmm. can't just look at it one, one channel. It's got to be all the social channels. Um, yeah. I think it's really important to your employer brand. Speaking of it being everywhere, uh, Amit mentioned, you know, the, the billboards, which is a far more, I think, consumer approach than, than talent acquisition typically should have. It may work for some organizations. It may not work for others. But I want to ask you, since, you know, recruitment marketing is a, it's it's marketing for candidates, right? You, you mentioned before we are we are selling to candidates at the end of the day. Are, are there any recruitment marketing campaigns where a talent acquisition professional could potentially piggyback on something that the overall marketing is doing, whether it be, you know, general mail or, you know, some of this social media stuff that we're talking about? Have you heard of any of those stories or anything along those lines? Yeah, I mean, good, good recruitment marketing strategies involve many things, but I think the key is personalization. And we keep talking about that. Personalizing your content across all channels. I mean, you could send out an email drip campaign. Um, then follow up with a targeted SMS campaign, or you can piggyback on an email marketing campaign that's showing off how your company achieved something of interest to a specific pool of candidates, and then follow up on social media with some targeted, you know, advertising. So there's many ways you can do this. Yeah, I, I mean, I think of the days when the careers page used to be buried at the bottom of yeah. a website, all the way in the footer. That's where somebody would have to go. Now it's at the top, right? You can find careers. Sometimes it, it jumps you to a different page, whatever it may be. Um, but that's piggybacking on, on, on marketing, right? I know uh, one of our customers um, works in the retail space. Uh, they are very big on their, their credit card that they offer and their coupons that they offer. What's their approach? Whenever they send out those credit cards or those coupons, right on smack dab on the front of the envelope is a QR code or the URL as to where to find a job there. Uh, and I think that's a, a great campaign. It's a low lift for the talent acquisition team. And again, just being everywhere all at once is, is the best. I want to hop over to some of the comments because I see Tom shared a shared a few thoughts here the one is featuring video that comes from an actual hiring managers is one of the most authentic and engaging things i've seen pop up over the past year you could feel the energy from a potential leader or manager and it makes a difference and i think that's so true because when we look at these large organizations right and they are interviews with the c-suite and they're interviews with folks that you may not interact with on a daily basis right even some startups they say oh you can you know rub elbows with the ceo on a daily basis that ceo is probably flying to and from meetings all the time they're traveling they're all over the place who are you going to spend your most time with 
hiring managers, right? The person whose team you're working for. Um, and Tom also says that he's behind the meme accounts. So now we know um, that is Tom's burner. Um, but it, it, I think there's there's a lot to unpack and a lot of different strategies. But at the end of the day, when you know Jordan and Amit talk about these things, you need to be on social media and you need to be on a, a video, right? And, and it doesn't have to be high quality. It doesn't have to be. We all have phones in, in the episode with Jordan. He pulled out his phone. He says, he has an iPhone. It shoots in 4K, right? Yeah. We are in the, the age of not everyone has flip phones. Um, we can get high quality video and put it together pretty snappy. And it's going to be genuine. We know it's genuine that way, especially if it's, it's from a hiring manager. Um, but Moving right along, last week we had Ali and, and Kristen from ChenMed come on, and, and they spoke a lot about talent communities and personalization. And there's, I think it's the, the next segue into this conversation, which is great. You're creating this exposure to the positions that you're hiring for. But what happens when they land on your career site and they don't find that role that they're looking for? But they saw it two, three days ago. They saw it posted on social media. What do you do with them then? So with that being said, let's air the first clip. I believe it's Kristen, uh, Justin, that we will air for the first clip from Chenman. Focusing on chemistry, like Kristen said, and developing pieces where it's our talent brand telling the story about why to join us. So that comes with writing stories for like a careers blog, you know, um, highlighting the awards that ChenMed employees are winning. You know, it's like, yes, our company wins the award, but really it's the employees sharing their feedback um, that makes us a great place to work. Um, and then just leading with that employer brand story and then disclosing the details around the jobs that we're hiring for and also offering the opportunity to, opportunity to join our talent community and sign up for alerts because if someone doesn't see their immediate fit, we're there to stay engaged with them and kind of keep that lead warm and attract that talent um, and hopefully find a fit for them in the future. Justin was on vacation last week uh, and he was hiking out in the desert. He, he may be a little bit dehydrated. That was the clip from Allie. Uh, Justin, let's air the other clip. We'll, we'll air them both and then we'll unpack them together. Carrie, does that sound like a plan? Sounds good. I think as, um, talent acquisition professionals, we need to be, we're all very mindful of our budgets. We're pretty typically seen as an expense line. Um, and and I see in, in this organization and in others, um, recruiters will go in and we buy the same candidates over and over again. So for instance, we have centers in New Orleans. If I go out and I'm hiring for you know, a medical assistant, I'm going to be hiring for that medical assistant today, next year, the year after that, people may not be quite ready. They may be over ready. They may be ready for supervisor. And so um, really working that, that idea of being smart and understanding who our talent is and purchasing them once. Um, so it kind of started from a financial, let's be smarter about how we, um, how we spend our money, where we're spending our money, and quits buying the same candidates over and over again. Um, also, and, and I know we're going to talk about personalization, and Ali's done a phenomenal job on personalization, um, but ha tracking people year over year and being able to say, you know, Devin, I talked to you, or my peer, Matt, talked to you 18 months ago about a role, and I know it wasn't a great time for you, but what about now? That is a those are the personalizations that candidates are looking for today. That's the personalization we offer our um, patients. And one of the things that we say in our recruiting model is that we offer our candidates the experience we want our patients to have. So it's a VIP um, patient experience. And so some of those things are the reasons that really prompted us to get into it. Um, and then leveraging the technology and phenom around personalization has helped us do it at scale. That was Kristen and Allie talking about talent communities. Um, if you haven't seen it yet, we do have a case study that is live uh, on our website right now. So definitely download that if you want to hear about how they are effectively using talent communities and how they are continuing to grow at a rapid pace. I know during that episode they shared, I think it was two years ago, they had 2,000 employees. 
Now they have 6,000 and their goal is to get to 10,000. So if you're on a similar hiring trajectory, definitely check that out. But one thing, Carrie, that I, I want to talk about here is obviously there's a lot of uncertainty. Uh, economically, uh, you turn on the news, people are talking about a recession. We hear horror stories of, of folks getting laid off, so on and so forth. Uh, talent communities are working super effectively for ChenMed because as Kristen mentioned there, they may be hiring for a position this week, next week, and the following week, right? But if you're one of those organizations who may be in a, a little bit of uncertainty or on a hiring freeze or something along those lines, it sounds like talent communities could be effective for you. It's almost like that add to cart thing in your Amazon where you're like, ah, may, maybe I'll buy it later. I don't know. Um, so I, I want to ask you, do you think no matter what situation your organization is in, whether it be a rapid growth like ChenMed or, or maybe suffering from some of that uncertainty, you should be leveraging talent communities. You should be reaching out to your potential candidates for when things get better. Oh, absolutely. Um, talent communities are key for, I think, all organizations, no matter the size. Um, they'll help your brand stay top of mind through all of this uncertainty and keep those passive candidates engaged for the long run. So when they're ready to make their next career move, you're going to be the brand that they think of first. And that's where they're going to start their journey when they're ready. Um, if it's an active candidate, it's keeping them engaged. Um, it's letting them know, hey, we're still here. Have you, if you not found the right job, okay, come back, come back again. Um, you know, you want to work here because you're obviously being engaged by that content and that community that's built. Um, there's a lot of a lot of um, positive things about talent communities that I think organizations are missing. No, I couldn't couldn't have said it better myself. I always think uh, I love sneakers, Carrie. I am on Nike trying to buy sneakers. They sell out in an instant. Um, and when they sell out, I'm a little bit bummed, right? I yeah. picture myself as a candidate, you know, looking for a position and it's no longer an open role. However, Nike has zero issue sending me push notifications for when the next shoe is going to release and when maybe I could win the raffle there. Obviously a little bit of a different scenario, uh, but again, it's, it's taking that consumer approach and applying it to your candidates. Now, the next piece around that is going to be, as you know, Jordan mentioned, it's serving up the right content to the right folks. He he used the example of a you know a, a legal professional being served up videos from the IT team and how that may you know kind of turn them off a little bit. So I want to ask you this, Carrie: How should organizations filter? Should it be, in your opinion, location-based? Should it be uh, potentially role-based and department-based? And then uh, last question is, is this something that AI can do on its own to hopefully help people save time? Once you've created those buckets, uh, whatever it may be best for you, um, can people who join the talent community automatically get filtered into them? Well, I think you have to use filters and that's part of personalization and targeting. Um, filtering using Phenom's AI technology can really get your company the best fit candidate at the right time. So you're filling those roles faster, reducing the cost for hire, which is what everyone's looking to do right now, especially during these times. Um, filtering is super important to when you're segmenting and sending out any type of campaign, whether it's SMS, uh, email, you want to make sure you're reaching the right pool of candidates and filtering is all a part of that. Um, and then what was your second question? I totally just forgot. Uh, it, will will AI it, it be able to do that for you? Like, can it, if a new person is added to your talent community and you see that they're a Penn State grad, can you filter that so that they automatically go absolutely. into some of those campaigns you mentioned? Yes, absolutely. AI is a part of that. Um, and like I mentioned before, Phenom's AI technology, that's what it does. It gets you... It, it fits the best candidate the first time. So you're not interviewing or screening the wrong candidates. That's what AI technology does. Yeah, I, I mean, it, interviewing or, or screening the wrong candidates is not only potentially a waste of time, but it's also a, a huge sacrifice to your resources. We all know Absolutely. that recruiters and talent acquisition teams are 
they're strapped, right? They are in back to back to back meetings. They have to post, post, post new jobs. They have to communicate with some of the hiring managers. Um, Bambi hopped in the comment section, speaking of hiring managers and says thumbs up for hiring manager videos. Uh, best way to get the human feel of what's expected in open roles. I couldn't agree more. Uh, and, and one thing that, that Chen Med continued to, to talk about in the video was uh, in that episode, if you didn't get a chance to watch it, definitely check it out on our, our YouTube or on, on LinkedIn. Um, but she mentioned the importance, and Carrie, you kind of touched on it here, of filtering out candidates, right? Uh, yeah. ChenMed's a unique organization. They work with, with the, the senior community, right? If you have somebody who's looking for a job who doesn't want to work with seniors, that's okay. ChenMed's not going to hold that against you. There may, may be another position for them, um, but if if you really enjoy, you know, working with children and 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 you want to do that with your life, kind of talks about those societal uh, ideologies that we talked about at the top of the show. It's okay for people to self-select out. You don't want to waste their time. That's going to leave a bad taste in their mouth. And you also don't want to waste your resources time because time, time is money and we only have a little bit of it. So to make the best use of your time, that's great. It sounds like at uh, Carrie, from what you mentioned, AI can do that by filtering in, you know, the, the right candidates and then, you know, expanding these campaigns with some of these videos. So hopefully everyone has enjoyed these clips. I, I want to ask just a couple questions before we hop off, Carrie. Uh, after, you know, having this conversation with me, obviously having conversations with our product team here and you know the, the good folks who are who are building phenom what do you think are some of the easiest things that companies can do to bring life back to their recruitment marketing campaigns um i you could do a few things that are super easy uh showcase your brand organically on social media we talked about your website and career page optimize your website's career page make it a com compelling career page with spotlight video that shows what it's like to work there um Try reaching out to new audiences uh, using filters with Phenom CRM campaigns and events. Send out, uh, follow up with a Phenom SMS campaign. Those are all good ways to refresh and build your pipeline. And yeah, I could couldn't have said it better myself. Now, I have to ask you: those are things that that exist right now, right? That that somebody could you know have a conversation with Phenom, uh, turn it on. If they're already a Phenom customer, they can begin to use it today. Um, but my question for you is, what are you excited for in the future? What are some of the conversations that you see or are a part of about where recruitment marketing can go? I think the future of recruitment marketing is a combination of engaging candidates with personalization and the automation that comes with our AI technology. Um, you know, we're starting to utilize that AI technology now, and it's only going to learn faster and faster because that's what AI technology and machine learning does. Uh, using Phenom's compelling career site with targeted content empowers recruiters with campaigns. You could use talent analytics to ensure your campaigns that are performing well. And all this is, is used with AI technology that continues to learn. And I think that's the future of recru recruitment marketing. Yeah, no, I, when you mentioned analytics there, uh, I almost broke out into hives again because I have been diving through our Phenom's social media analytics and I'm opening up manual spreadsheets and going through them and creating charts and finding, I have it, literally 30,000 tabs open on my screen right now. Um, so it, hearing the excitement of the future of, of being able to you know, set a couple filters and parameters and then immediately- It's a dashboard, you set it up. For and you forget it. It's super easy. Yes. That's what you need. I love it. set it and forget it. That <laughs> there's a I think there's an oven company that that may do something similar to those lines. Set it and That's forget nice. it. But we're bringing it to talent acquisition. And I love that. They they probably sold a million ovens with with set it and forget it. Now, uh, obviously we talked a bunch about, you know, the phenom here. Uh this is a phenom program. We have to. But I want to ask you um from your personal opinion uh, how is Phenom leading the way in recruitment marketing? And don't be afraid to mention some of the things you said before, uh, but I definitely want to clip this up and, and get it out to the, the socials and meet folks where they are, as we mentioned. I think Phenom's leading the way with um, our AI technology and the interconnectivity of our intelligent talent experience platform. It truly connects people, data, interactions, and provides you the analytics you need for your everyday and the future of your businesses. 
That's that's perfect. Tom chimes in and he says, forgetting your oven is on. Yes, it feels <laughs> dangerous. Tom, it it is, um, but we have smoke detectors. Uh, hopefully it won't set the house on fire. We're not going to set and forget our, our ovens anymore. Uh, only our dashboards, right? And then we can hop in and see where things are. Carrie, this conversation has been an absolute blast. Um, I hope you enjoyed it half as much as, as I did. Uh, and I can't wait to have you on the program in the future to dive more into recruitment marketing. Um, but, but before we go, ha have a great weekend. I really appreciate it. You too. And have fun in New York. I might see you Oh, there. thank you. Thank you. We're, yeah, we're doing lunch. <laughs> we, we discussed we that. Yeah. We are, but <laughs> Thanks, you have to like Carrie. first tell me where to meet you. How about that? <laughs> yes. Yes. <laughs> yes. All right. Well, well, we'll see you this weekend. Bye. Nice to meet everybody. Bye. A special thanks to Carrie Monaco and everyone, quite frankly, who is featured on that episode. Uh, the good folks over at Cave Social, ChenMed, as well as Clickify. It was spectacular conversations we had all throughout the month of September. Makes me even more excited for the month of November, where, as I mentioned before, we will be diving into the employee experience, specifically talent management, how you can help your employees evolve to the current roles and future roles and beyond. I uh, just want to call a little bit of attention to Tom Tate's last comment there, leaving the oven on seems dangerous. Uh, I've been watching a lot of Russell Wilson highlights and Mr. Unlimited and his danger, which sometimes it's fun to be a little dangerous, Tom. So shout out to you. Uh, please tune in next week where Tom will be joining me. Maybe we can talk about leaving the oven on. No, we're not going to talk about that. We're going to talk about the employee experience and talent management, and quite frankly, everything in between. I believe we will be joined uh, by Newell Brands, so definitely something that you want to bookmark on your calendar. Remember, you can always go on to phenom.com on the community page and check out our registration form to stay up to date with our newest blogs surrounding the Talent Experience Live show uh, with past episodes, as well as if you'd like to come on the show as a guest and discuss something, maybe even go against something that we said because you've had a different experience. Either way, I hope everyone has a wonderful weekend. I hope you tune in next month for our new season, which will be super exciting. And I hope everyone has you know, a, a happy and safe Halloween. Uh, biggest of hugs, tiniest of kisses. Of course, I am talking about the Hershey chocolates. Um, get yourself some Reese's peanut butter cups. Enjoy the rest of the weekend, and we will see you next week. Thanks so much for tuning in.